Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Automotive Diagnosis YouTube channel. In this video, I will show you how to diagnose and test different type of relays. I have provided uh, four pin relays and uh, a couple of different types of five pin relays. So I will show you how they work, how you can test them. And after finishing this part, I will take the camera to the car to show how you can uh, bypass the relay if after the test, you find out that the relay is faulty and you don't have any spare one, you can bypass the relay uh, until you buy the brand new one. Okay, let's start. Uh, you see the internal structure of the relay here. For any relay, we have two main sections, coil and the switch side. Uh, for the switch side, it can be normally open or normally closed. I will uh, explain how you can test them. And for the coil, uh, this, co this coil is responsible to create a magnetic field to close the switch. So when switch is open, we need to provide the battery positive and negative to the coil from these two pins to energize the coil. And then we will have the magnetic field here uh, enough to close the switch. When switch is closed, obviously it can uh, bridge the power from one pin to the other one from the source of power to our load okay but what are these pins normally we have set, we have certain numbers we have fixed numbers for the relays you so you see them here so 85 85 and 86 these two are connected to uh, the coil. So normally 86 is connected to the source of the power and 85 is connected to the negative. So positive on 86 and negative to 85. So if we connect 80, if we connect the 85 and 86 to the positive and negative, we should have the magnetic field in the coil and we should see that this switch is getting closed. Obviously on the relay because you have the cover on the relay Okay, you won't be able to see the switch. You only hear the click, click, click sound. But when you have the click sound, it doesn't mean that the relay is uh, working properly because the click sound, it just give, gives you the idea that this coil is working. So what we do, we need to confirm that after clicking, after hearing the clicking sound, you have uh, the connection between these two pins and you don't have the connection before providing the power and ground. So if I show you what happens inside the relay, okay? So I have two pins for the coil. I just try to show you the coil like this, just to make it easy to understand. I have 85 and 86 to the coil which 86 is connected to the power, 85 is connected to the ground. And I have switch here. Switch is here. This is the normally open relay. So 30 is connected here to the battery power. And this is 87, which is my load. Okay, and the switch is here. So in normal circumstances, when relay is not working, I don't have any power and ground on 85, 86. So this switch is open. But as soon as I provide power and ground to 85 and 86, I should have the magnetic field here. And this magnetic field should close the switch because of the magnetic effect. So I will have, I should have the connection between 30 and 87. So it means when I don't have the power and ground on 85, 86, I shouldn't have any continuity between pin number 30 and 87 if your relay is normally open. And most of the relays out there are normally open. Okay, sometimes you have this diagram on the, on the relay, something like this. Sometimes uh, you don't. But if you don't have it, normally, uh, you have the 
numbers here, you can figure it out by the numbers, or normally these two across, these are connected to the coil. And you see the numbers here. I have the 30 here. I have 87, so 86 and 85. So these two should be connected to the coil. These two should be connected to the uh, switch. So how I am gonna try this one. So I can use the multimeter and I have created a tool for myself to provide the power. So I can connect these two clamps to uh, 8586 and by switching this one on and off, I can provide the power to the relay to uh, check it safely. So first of all, as I told you, if your relay is normally open, you shouldn't have continuity between 30 and 87. So if you do have the continuity on the normally open switch, it means these two pins are connected to each other permanently. It means the switch is stuck closed. So you have to replace the relay. How can we check it? So we need to grab the multimeter, turn on your multimeter and set it on the continuity function. So you see the sign is the continuity function. Just to confirm that my multimeter works properly on the continuity function, okay? You should hear this sound if continuity works properly. So between these two pins, between these two pins, 30 and 87, you shouldn't have continuity when relay is not energized. So I don't hear anything. It means it's okay so far. But how am I supposed to uh, check uh, the coil side? So you can check the uh, internal resistance. That's the first section. So you can just check the internal resistance like this and you can check it with the specification in the workshop manual. So I have 85 ohms, 85 ohms for this one. If, it, if you don't get any reading, it means that you have the open circuit, so you have to replace the whole uh, relay. But what about for uh, relay operation? For relay operation, as I told you, we need to provide the uh, power and ground to 8586 uh, to make sure if this coil is uh, creating the magnetic field for us to close the switch. So. These are the 8586. I connect this one there and the other one that side. Okay. So what I do, I show you how this one works. I haven't turned this on yet. So you need to look at Okay. You need to look at this this section. You need to look at this section. So when I turn it on, you see, see, switch is getting closed and open. So this is how relay works. After providing the power and ground to 8586, a coil will create a magnetic field for us and it, it will close the switch. So what happens to confirm that the switch is, switch is okay? In this case, we should have the continuity between uh, 30 and 87 so see okay so I do have the continuity between 87 and 30 because coil is creating the magnetic field and closing the switch and if I turn it off I don't have continuity anymore I turn it on I do have the continuity so this means my relay works properly okay so let's try another one let's try another one another relay so you have all the numbers here again 86 85 and this is 30 and this is 87 the first thing is to check the internal resistance between 85 and 86 and if i check it So I got 90. 90 ohms is the internal resistance for this one. So it means my coil is okay from the resistance point of view. 
I shouldn't have if this relay this relay is normally uh, open so I shouldn't have any continuity between 30 and 87 so I check it right now no continuity it means so far so good then next step is to energize the coil again provide the power to 85 and 86 okay just like this and turn the turn it on you should hear the click sound yes i hear the click sound and what i should have i should have in this case i should have the continuity between the 87 and 30. right i should have the continuity between 87 and 30. so it means that this relay is working properly but what happens when you want to bypass the bypass the relay as i told you uh, this 30 is connected to the battery positive 87 is connected to your load whatever your load is it could be anything on your circuit because a relay can be used on uh, a different circuit this could be your fuel pump it could be your uh, starter it could be anything on, on, on the engine or on other systems so when, when you need to bypass the relay you need to actually connect these two you can't just grab a piece of wire and connect these two i'm not talking about just connecting the wire on here so you need to remove the relay from the fuse box find 87 and 30 and put that piece of wire exactly in the fuse box for uh, five uh, for 30 and 87 so you are actually trying to bridge between 30 and 87 on the fuse box i will show you later on how to uh, how to do that the other one is the five pin relay for toyota uh, for the five pin relay what we have we have another another pin so we have <clears throat> these two pins again for the coil these two pins for uh, the switch but what we have we have another switch in there as well so we have two switches in there on many cases for the p for the five pin relays we have two switch in there one is the normally closed one is normally open so it means this relay is providing providing the power or uh, bridging the power from 30 to actually to one circuit when it's not working when it's not energized but when you energize it it will stop providing the power to that circuit but it's going to do that for the another one so what happens for the five pin relays if this is your if you remember this one for the four pin relay what happens for the five pin we have another we have another wire here which is for another pin that one is called 87 a and you have a switch in here which is connected to this one okay so we are actually having two switches in here so this one is normally close and this switch is normally open so what do you understand it means when this relay is not working you should have the continuity between 30 and 87 a which is normally closed one but as soon as you provide the power and ground to 85 86 because you should have the magnetic field here and it will close the switch this continuity will be between 30 and 87 okay so we have this type of relays many many were like in the power door lock i've seen that on the wiper system as well so how it works so first of all the same thing you can check the uh, internal resistance of the coil so if you see my multimeter here these two are uh for the for the coil i just check it right like that 
I have 112 ohms for for the coil but between these three if you remember we had 30 we had 87 and we had 87 a here 87 is another uh, extra switch here to provide the power to another circuit so what happens i should have the continuity between 30 and 87 a so if this one the middle one is my 87 30 87 a do you hear that this is the continuity and i shouldn't have the continuity with the other one so it means this is my this is pin 30 this is 87 if i bring it close so this is a this is 30 this is 87 this is 87 a and these two are for 85 86 so if i check it again between the 30 and 87 a i should have continuity right now because this is the normally closed switch but what about if i energize the relay if i energize the relay again with my With my tool, I connect the positive and negative to 85, 86. First of all, I turn it on. I hear the click sound. It means coil is working. But this time, let's try to check the continuity between 30 and 87A, which we had the continuity before. We shouldn't have continuity anymore because relay is already energized. But what about with 87? See, we have the continuity. But if I turn the relay off, I don't have continuity between 30 and 87 anymore, but I do have with 87A, okay? So it means 87 is this one, and this is 30. So I should have continuity between 30 and 87 when relay is not energized, okay? Now my switch is off, okay? Nothing between nothing between 30, between 30 and 87 but when I energize the relay between 30 and between 30 and 87 I should have the continuity this is how you can test the five pin relays but this is not the only type of five pin relays we have we have another type which is this one so if I show you the numbers If I show you the numbers, you can see that right now. Yes. So we have number 30 here. Uh, let's start by 85, 86. Uh, this is 85. This is 85 and this is 86. So these two are for the coil. What about for the switch? We have eight, we have 30 and we have two 87 we don't have 87 a we have 287 what does that mean if we check the uh, diagram on the on the relay 30 is connected to the battery power it goes all the way to the switch but in the output we have two wires at two out, actually output two output 87 87 so it means that we don't have two switches we have just one switch which is normally open but in the output, instead of having just one output, we have two. It means this relay can provide two outputs to two different circuits. So on many, many systems like many engine control uh, relays, I've seen, I've seen those ones. They have two outputs to provide the power to multiple circuits. So I have two 8787. And because these two are connected to one section, I should have the continuity between these two at any time doesn't really matter if relay is energized or not so so this is 87 and the middle one is 87 as well if i check the continuity between those 87 hear that it shows that i have it it shows these two are connected to each other internally so for activating the relay again same way 85 and this is for 86 okay so i hear the click sound 
So what happened now? In this case, not only I should have the continuity between 87, because I have 287, this time, because the switch is closed, I should have continuity between 30 and any of those 87s. So the, this one is 30. I just connect this one to try to touch the 80, 30 from here. Okay. One of the 87s and the other one. Okay. So it means this relay is working properly as well. So what is the other one? Same story. Other one is exactly same, same relay. I do have five pin, five pins, but normally to confirm because this one doesn't have any diagram on it. Okay, this one is for the Kia and Hyundai. So if I want to check this one, if I if I'm not sure if if I'm not sure uh, about the switches, how many switches I have, I just try to check the continuity at the beginning. See? So between these two, I have the continuity. It means it's exactly the same. I have two 87s just like this. I have two 87s just like this. It means this relay is giving me. Uh, two outputs and as soon as I provide the power and ground to 85 and 86 I hear the click sound what about for the continuity this is one of them okay this is 30 this one is 30 I connect one of them to the 30 one and the other one Okay, but if I turn the power off and disconnect the power, I shouldn't have any continuity anymore. It means my relay works properly. Okay, all good. Uh, so th this was how, this was the procedure to check the relays for different type of relays. Uh, I'm gonna take the camera to the car to show you how you can bypass the relay in case of emergency if your relay uh, actually goes faulty and you don't have any other option at that moment okay uh, we are checking the relays on the car we already know how to uh, check the relays how to test the relays after removing but how we can check them on the car as well because it's not only about the relays themselves uh, it could be from the uh, those wiring and those pins connected to the relays as well. So I removed the engine fuse box cap, and uh, uh, I will just dis I will just trying to remove some relays to show you the ideas. So if you see the all the fuses and relays location, this is the fuel pump relay, and this is the starter. So I will show you how to test this one, how to test that one, how to bypass any of them. Okay, so let's go for the fuel pump which is this one right here. So first of all, I remove the relay itself. And as you see, it's just a normal four pin relay and you know how to test it already. And if you, if you have a look quickly, the numbers are a bit different on this one, uh, number, one and two these two are connected to the coil instead of 85 86 and number three and five these two are connected to the switch and number four is actually the missing pin i don't have any pin here if i had five pin i i would actually i would have another pins here okay let's check here if you remember for uh, for the coil we have we, we should have one power supply for the coil one positive for the coil and one positive for the switch side so I can measure it from here it, this is my the fuel this is my fuel pump I should have positive on the one positive on the coil one positive on the switch side when ignition is on so ignition switch is on 
I have my multimeter here. So I provide the ground. I provide the ground. And I need to check if I have those two uh, positive on the fuse box. Because obviously I don't, if I don't have those positive, my relay is not gonna work. So see, I'm just checking the coil right now. Nothing in this pin. So I do have the battery power in this pin. So when I have the battery power, this one is gonna be 86. But for the switch, these two pins are for the switch. So I check one of them. I do have the power here as well. So one power here for the coil, one power here for the switch. It means this is okay. Fuse, is, uh, fuse box is providing the uh, is providing the battery positive for me. But obviously I need the ground as well for the coil to energize the relay. And that's negative should be controlled by the uh, engine control module anytime you uh, crank the car in order to activate the fuel pump. But what, what if the, my relay goes faulty? If this relay goes faulty, if you check it with the method that I showed you and you see that the relay doesn't work anymore, so you have two or uh, two ways. The easiest one is to find another identical relay in the fuse box just just uh, to fix the car for the moment to get the car to somewhere that you can buy the brand new uh, relay but you cannot obviously remove any relay you want you need to have a look at here because for this car which is Ford if I remove EEC power I won't be able to start the car anymore so I go for another one like horn so you see obviously for the horn you can use the horn just for this moment to fix the car uh, to get it running. And if I remove another relay, which is horn, you see these two relays are exactly identical and the numbers, everything is exactly the same. So what I do, I can just swap these two relays, put the horn to the fuel pump place to keep the engine running until I get to a point to buy another relay. But if you don't see any identical relay in the car, you can just uh, jump between pin number 30 and 87. And these are those two pins. 30 and 87, they are right here. So what I'm gonna do, I just grab a piece of wire and I put one of them in 30. You see that? It's not a bad idea to make a pin for it, but if if you are in emergency and you don't have the pin, you can just use a piece of wire. But you you want to make sure that the ignition is off at the beginning when you are doing that. The ignition must be off. So I put one here and I insert the other one in 87 A 87. Sorry, I put the other one in 87. And I hear the fuel pump is running right now. I can hear fuel pump operation right now so I'm just jumping jumping between 30 and 87 this is actually bypassing the relays if I put this one back on for the start relay if I remove the start relay you see exactly the same thing do you see that 85 86 for the pin for the 85 86 for the coil and 30 87 for the switch. We know how to test this one. We go for the other section. If I want to jump it, I find 30. I need to connect it to, to 87. And you should be hearing the starter operation. Do you hear that? So this is how we uh, bypass the relays just in case of emergency. But uh, normally I go for swapping the relays if I have any identical relay. It's better just to go for uh, swap the relays with a good one uh, to, to actually make it, more, make it more safer. But if you don't have any option, you can just bypass the relay with a piece of wire. Thank you for 
watching and hope to see you guys in another episode very soon.